So you remember we were talking about uh, continuous integration and this idea of defining a continuous integration pipeline. And we are using GitLab as our platform for practicing this uh, CICD practice. And in that sense, what you've got to do, let's see now, where should I pick it up? Uh, let's go back to here. This was uh, an illustration of this notion of a pipeline, a sequence of stages, as we call them. Each of these is a stage. And a stage is comprised of jobs. There could be multiple jobs. In many cases, there's only one job per stage, but uh, there may be more than one. And so how do we uh, describe the pipeline? And in the case of the GitLab platform, you describe it in a file of type YAML, which is an alternative to JSON, really. It's a cleaner form of the JSON uh, representation. And in lots of other uh, CI platforms, it's a similar story, really. It's either YAML or JSON that you're using. Some actually allow you to describe the pipeline in in code, in, in actual uh, procedural code, uh, but uh, not in our case anyway. So if I fast forward then to this slide here, so we we describe our pipeline in this YAML file, and it has to be given a specific name. And the idea behind that is when we push, commit and push updates to our project on GitLab now, because as opposed to GitHub, because GitLab also has a repo uh, aspect to it which is very like GitHub. So instead of pushing our commits up to GitHub, we will be just pushing them to GitLab. And what GitLab does is it looks to see if the, the repo that you have just pushed a commit to, if that repo has a file with this specific name, .gitlabci.yaml, then it knows it should execute a continuous integration pipeline for that project. And so it, it opens up this file and looks inside it. And what it will see is, uh, well, this is just to, to the, what I'm showing you on the right here now is, is part of this YAML file. And we, the part that I'm showing you actually describes to GitLab, what are the different stages in this pipeline? And in my case, there are three stages to it. The last one is slightly chopped off, but it's a, there are three stages. And then if it wants to see, well, what are the jobs inside a particular stage? It looks down further in the file. And so it might find something like this. This is one stage, this is one job, sorry, this is one job in uh, a particular stage. And you could kind of work it out. What stage is this job related to? It looks like it's linked to the install stage, which is one of the ones that I mentioned up here. Now, what is a job then? A job is simply a, potentially a set of uh, shell commands, which you would normally execute from the command line if you were doing it locally. But instead, these shell commands or terminal commands, they're being executed by GitLab on a server that it has provisioned especially to, especially to run your CI pipeline. Now, in this simple example, this particular job for this particular stage 
the shell command that it's going to execute is just the npm install command, which is, as we know, it will install the dependencies of our project. And our project happens to be a JavaScript project, a node project. Uh, here's another example of a job. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it's linked to the test stage, which is the third stage here. And uh, in this case, it looks like it's running my Cypress tests. Okay. So uh, this, the difference between the job on the left and job on the right is that as well as a scripts section, there is a before scripts sections. Sometimes uh, you want to do something before you execute the set of commands that relate to a particular job. And that looks like what I'm doing here. It looks like what I'm doing is I'm starting a server first. And then when that's done, then I want to run my tests, which kind of makes sense. So a job in terms of its structure, and that's what I'm showing you on the next slide, a job has, in terms of its structure, there are a number of parts to it, many of which we don't use, uh, to be honest, but uh, I'm giving you the full set of parts that make up a job. Now, the main part is this one here, the scripts part of a job. And it's inside the scripts part. That's where you encode the set of shell or terminal commands that you want to have executed uh, for this particular job associated with a particular stage. And again, if I go back to the previous screen, you know, you can see the script section here and you can see the script section here. But as well as the script section, there are these other sections. There's the variables section where, obviously enough, you can declare some uh, some variables that may be used in other parts of the job. You know, they may be used in the script section. There is a before scripts section, which we saw an example of there a minute ago. And as the name suggests, anything that you put in the before script section, that's executed before the script section. <laughs> There's an after script section, so you can have commands that you want to have executed only when the scripts section has been completed. Uh, the before script and after script section, they will all contain shell commands or terminal commands uh, which you would normally execute from your command line. Uh, but uh, the GitLab CI server will execute them for you. And moving on far and further, there's an artifacts artifacts section. Uh, often the, in the script section, it produces some output in the form of uh, files or folders. And maybe you want those files and our folders to be available to other jobs in your pipeline. And so in order to share those artifacts uh, between jobs, you've got to, uh, first of all, sort of um, declare them here. So that would, that would apply in our case. Uh, so we might have one job like the uh, the the job that installs the third party dependencies, in other words, the node modules, we want those that node modules folder to be available to other jobs within our pipeline. And so the one that actually does the installation, it would have to declare the node modules as being an artifact of that job so that it can be shared. Also, the last one here, Sometimes you only want a job to be executed if the commit that was made to the repo was to a particular branch. And you see examples of that as well in the, the lab that I have accompanying this set of slides. 
albeit now you won't do that lab until after the midterm break. So um, that's the full set of uh, sections that make up a, a job. There's tags as well, but we I don't ever use those really. Right, uh, it's all a bit uh, abstract, admittedly, until you start practicing these things and you will get a chance to practice it uh, when we eventually get to do the lab associated with this set of slides. Okay, that's that. I'll go back to Moodle. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we have an assignment specification and you've probably had a chance, uh, maybe maybe not, to read over it. So I'm just going to go down through it. So here it is here. Okay, so in terms of... Uh, a one a one liner or one statement as to what the objective of this assignment is. I'm saying it's to automate the build process of a React single page app project. So you're developing a React app in your web app dev module, uh, and in this module, you are going to automate the the build. Uh, the build process associated with that. And that's a term that I would have used yesterday when I was discussing CICD. Uh, okay, uh, where the build the, the build process in the context of a React single page app, uh, a significant part of it would be automating the testing of that single page app which is what we were talking about last week. And that's the focus of this week's lab, as it turns out. So what you'll be doing in this week's lab and also what you'll be doing in the first lab after the midterm break, uh, they will feed in uh, fairly significantly to this assignment. Uh, this section here, I wouldn't worry about. Uh, the only reason this section is included in the specification is for the purpose of our external examiners. So we have people that look at the assignments that we give to students. We refer to those people as our external examiners. So all I'm telling the external examiner here is the fact that you guys are studying a web app dev module in parallel with this agile module. So we can skip over that. Uh, you've got roughly four weeks to work on this assignment. Uh, it's worth 40%. I'm just mentioning here the various tools that you will be using uh, within this assignment. Uh, most of many of which we've used already, some of which she will start to use when we come back after the midterm break. But you, you, you will be able to start on this assignment if you choose to. Uh, really after you've completed today's lab you will have lots of uh, knowledge that you can apply to this assignment if you decide to start on it let's say next week in particular i'm talking about the cypress part of it the GitLab ci you won't get the practice at until uh, as i said a number of times already you won't get the practice at until uh, the first week when we come back uh, we've done a lot on Git. Webpack, uh, you won't have... Webpack is actually something that you are using already in the Web App Dev module. Uh, you may or may not be aware of it. I, I will look at aspects of Webpack in the first lecture when we come back after the midterm break. So you can kind of uh, postpone working on anything related to Webpack and indeed anything related to GitLab CI. If you want to start working on this assignment, you can you can postpone dealing with those two aspects of the assignment, but certainly the Cypress part of it, you will be able to start working on straight away. 
Uh, in terms of deliverables, what you'll be handing up to me, uh, I don't know if Roseanne has spoken to you about the first assignment that she is giving me, but one of the uh, one of the deliverables that she will require you to do is to make a short video recording demonstrating uh, the work that she will be doing for her assignment, which is essentially extending the movies app. Now, I I I will need to see that video as well. Okay. But anyway, you won't be making that video until just before you hand up her assignment, which is probably roughly four weeks as well, four weeks time. Uh, what you will be handing up to me as well is just a zip of your code base, where your code base will comprise of the work that you will have done on extending the movies app. And it will include Cypress tests. And thirdly, it will include um, it will include the YAML file that I was just talking about there a moment ago. Uh, it's going to be really important. I, I will give you a template for the README file that I want you to include in the repository. You will be pushing. Um, you will be pushing the work that you're doing on this assignment. You will be pushing it up to a repo on GitLab as opposed to GitHub. But just like GitHub uh, allows you to have a README in your base folder of your project, uh, the same applies to GitLab. Now I will give you an exact template as to what you should put into the README. I'll give you that closer to the hand update and it will take you no more than I would say an hour or maybe even slightly less than that to uh, write up the readme because I'm telling you exactly what I want you to put into it. So it's only a case of uh, just writing it up in accordance with the template. So an hour, an hour and a half is uh, probably you'll get it done in that time frame. So I wouldn't worry about that until closer to the hand update. Uh, it's going to be very important that you maintain a Git log right throughout your time working on this assignment because the Git log will essentially tell me how you worked your way through this assignment. So every time you do some work on this assignment, whether that be for uh, 30 minutes or an hour, you should do a at least one commit and the commit message should state clearly what you were working on. And not in terms of what files you were changing, but what task were you working on? Were you developing uh, a particular set of test cases? Were you trying to fix a particular test case uh, along those lines? So just a, a statement, a clear statement as to what you were working on. Uh, for the period, uh, whatever the duration of the period was. So I would expect everybody to have a Git history that spans most of the time between now and the hand update. And I'm assuming you're going to start working on this assignment uh, maybe in the middle of maybe next week, start doing some work on it anyway. And the work you will be doing is writing tests in the main later on. In the period, you will start working on the GitLab CI stuff. And so that will just be making changes to one particular file. But uh, tell me what parts of the GitLab CI pipeline you're working on. And it, some of it may be fixing problems uh, and just state uh, exactly what the problem was. So it's really important to have a Git history for this assignment. So how am I going to grade it? I've, I'm giving you three grade bands. One, I'm calling one the good band, which is between uh, 40 and 60%. Then I have an excellent band, which is between 80, sorry, between 60 and 80. And then I have uh, an outstanding grade band, which is 80 plus. And I'm telling you what I'm looking for 
uh, within each of these bands. So if I go back to the good grade band, uh, okay, I've just got a theme for it, but that's all right. Now, the assumption here is that the features you have developed for the movies app for the assignment in the in the web app dev module, the majority of the features that you have developed for the movies app are very similar to the features that you would have developed in the labs for that module. Okay. So if that's the, the nature of a lot of the work that you will have done for the assignment in that web app dev module, if the nature of the work of the features that you have developed are quite similar to the features that were already developed, then you're probably falling inside this grade band. Now, what you'll be doing for me, though, is you will be writing automated tests for those new features that you have developed for the movies app. Okay. Uh, and so that's what I'm talking about here. You're going to have functionality and navigation uh, test cases, and you will see how to do those in this week's lab and this module. But the functionality will be the new functionality that you have developed for the movies app for that other assignment in the other module and any navigation, additional navigations that you have added to the movies app. Any navigations that you've added, you, you'll have to write automated tests for them. Any functionality that you've added, you would have to write automated tests for them, for me. Um, informative text test documentation, that really relates to the, the kind of strings that you pass to your describe blocks and it blocks. You might remember I said that that constitutes the documentation associated with your Cypress tests. Whatever text you put into the uh, the first argument of the it block and the first argument of the describe block, just make sure that they are clear uh, statement of what the purpose of the test is. And you will see examples of that again in uh, this week's lab as you work your way through it. Um, adherence to testing principles, the kind of testing principles I would have mentioned way, way back would be test case isolation, the silent principles. So make sure that you adhere to those. In particular, the silent principle. Don't have console log statements scattered through your testing code because they all then show up when you run your tests and we don't want to see those. All we want to see is what tests passed and what was the purpose of each test. And the purpose of each test is covered by uh, this statement here that I've just highlighted. Now, when you when you complete today's lab, you'll have a set of test cases, uh, Cypress test cases for uh, the functionality that you have developed in the movies app. Okay, but I I want you to um, once you've submitted the work for today's lab, when you start working on the assignment, I want you to remove all of those test cases and uh, start from there, essentially. So that's what I'm saying here. Only include tests, essentially, that you have written for the new functionality that you have developed. You may extend, maybe part of what you do in the web app dev assignment is to extend some existing functionality, and that's fine as well. Uh, but the tests that you write for me will only relate to the extension that you have made to the existing functionality. So uh, automated testing is clearly a big part of this assignment. Uh, in terms of continuous integration, okay, so this is kind of a chicken and egg now. You you won't have done the continuous integration lab until when we come back after the midterm break. So I can come back and talk about this stuff maybe then, but essentially your continuous integration pipeline uh, will consist of three stages, a install stage, a build stage, and a test stage. 
and you will actually when you complete the git lab lab after we come back then you will already have a pipeline that has those three stages so i will be giving you uh, pretty much uh, all of the uh, contents of the yaml file you will pretty much have it when you've completed the gitlab lab and you will be able to reuse that in the assignment which is straightforward copy really in terms of source control i've kind of already mentioned this you know you need to have a good uh, git log history you need to follow the branch edit merge uh, branching um uh, sorry workflow and I, I talk a little bit about that later on in the assignment specification but you you, you won't be committing to the master branch you'll be creating branches emanating off it and then merging those branches back into the master although i won't be using the master branch we'll be using the main branch i know in the web app dev module Roseanne, uh, you have a you have a GitHub repo accompanying the work that you're doing in her labs, as far as I'm aware. Um, and she doesn't use the master branch; she uses a branch called the main branch. Well, I will be applying that here as well because the GitLab repo doesn't support a master branch; it only allows you to have a main branch or other branches, but not the master branch. Right. Uh, in the excellent grade band, the idea here now is that, well, you've probably developed features in the Movies app that are somewhat different to the features that you have already developed for that app in the in the in those labs. And that really means that you've probably written some new components, React components in order to uh, develop this particular whatever the functionality is that you have developed for her assignment for the web app dev assignment um, as opposed to in the good band I, I'm saying in the good band I said that any new functionality that you added to the movies app is probably similar to the functionality that you've already developed in the labs for that module whereas down here I'm saying at least some of the functionality not all of it necessarily but some of the functionality that you've developed for the movies app assignment uh, it will involve new components new react components that you have added and so that makes the testing slightly slightly more difficult but in terms of the, this assignment again we're back to automated testing so you're going to have functionality obviously um, you, I'd also be looking for some instances of error and exception testing. Um, thirdly, I would like to see good use of nesting of your testing code. Remember the, the way we structure our testing code is we have describe blocks and it blocks. But you can nest describe blocks within describe blocks. So it's just a way of structuring your code, really. So I'd like to see uh, examples of that going on. And I, you will see it in this week's lab where I nest describe blocks inside other describe blocks. So you see the way that I use it when we're writing Cypress tests. So I'd like you to replicate that and maybe enhance it a little bit even. Uh, custom commands is not something I have covered in Cyprus, but I'm giving you a link to it here that explains what I mean by custom commands. So you'll have to have a read of that and see if you can apply it. Uh, just maybe one or two examples of implementing your own custom commands in the context of Cyprus. So I am requiring you to look at something that I have not covered, which I think is reasonable if you're aiming for something as high as 80%. Uh, if you're aiming for something as high as 
I'd like to see that you can uh, do some of your own kind of reading up on the technology that we've been using, Cypress in this case. Uh, in terms of continuous integration, I'm saying adherence to a branching policy. I talk about that down at the, later on in this specification, but again, it kind of assumes that you have done some little bit of work on uh, on continuous integration, and, and the reality is that you you haven't until you do the lab that I provide you with. So maybe I'll just skip over this talking about this now, because as you will see when you work on the the Git lab lab that I have created for you, you I actually enforce a branching policy, and I'm really asking you to follow the branching policy that you will use in that lab, uh, apply it again in the assignment. So it's really, you've, you've already practiced it in the lab and just keep on uh, with that practice when you work your way through this assignment. So I think once you've done the GitLab lab, this will make a lot more sense to you. So I wouldn't worry about uh, uh, dealing with it now really. Uh, uh, bundling or code splitting, that's the first topic I'm going to cover when I come back after the midterm break. I keep talking about what we're going to be doing in the future, but uh, I'll talk about that uh, in the first lecture when we come back. So again, this is something that you can add in uh, towards the back end of this assignment. It's very easy to add it in, uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. So really, what I've, what I've already kind of said is that between now and when we come back after the midterm break, the only aspect of this assignment that you can work on is writing more Cypress tests. And you, once you've completed today's lab, that will be doable by you. The, the CI stuff, uh, you won't really be able to, you won't need to do any continuous integration work in uh, on the assignment until, uh, certainly until after, the first week uh, when we come back. And that's that's understood from my perspective. Uh, source control, uh, I would like people to have just two pull requests linked to their uh, project. Now you've already practiced uh, pull requests in last week's lab. And so what you will probably do is just work with one of your classmates and get one of your classmates to uh, submit a pull request on your project. And you can tell the classmate, look, this is the piece of code that I want you to add to my project. And it can be something very small. It doesn't have to be a significant thing. Maybe more to the, it could be to the Cypress tests or to the, Re to the movies app react code uh, so you need to get together with one other person uh, and get them to submit two pull requests on your project and you can submit two pull requests on their project and they can provide the exact code that they want you to, to link to the pull requests alternatively if you don't like doing that what you can do is uh, create a second GitHub account for yourselves, just using a different email, uh, and use that other GitHub account as the account uh, basis for submitting the pull requests, if that makes sense to you. So if you don't like working with a classmate, and no problem if you don't want to do that, then just go away and create another GitHub account for yourself and then follow the pull request procedure that you followed in last week's lab. Um, follow it using this second GitHub account as the supposedly collaborator uh, on your project. You can come back to me on that if you're, if you're a little unclear as to what I'm getting at there. In the outstanding grade band, finally, 90, what are we saying, 80 plus, then I'm, I'm mentioning two things. I'm saying one, you can extend the continuous integration pipeline to include auto deployment. 
So the idea there is, uh, so your pipeline, your CI pipeline will have an install stage. That stage, it's just going to be installing the node modules. It will have a build stage where you uh, compile all of your JavaScript code, your React JavaScript code, compiles all of it and puts it into a build folder. And I'll show you how to do that uh, when we talk about bundling in relation to React, which is the first lecture after we come back. Um, so you, you'll have a you'll have a bundling stage. You'll have a test stage in your pipeline. So there are three stages: install, build, and test. Uh, here I'm saying add in a fourth stage, and in the fourth stage, you will be deploying your React application to a cloud service. And I'm giving you a link here. Uh, where am I? Oh yeah, I'm giving you a link here that talks about the different cloud services that you could use as the platform to deploy your React app. So there are services like Netlify, Vercel, they would probably be the two main ones. And so you'd have to work out how can I get my pipeline to automatically deploy my updated React app to one of these services. So again, that obviously involves uh, you reading up on this, follow this link and read up on it yourselves. You can either do that or alternatively, if you want to focus on the whole testing area, Cypress, we've been using Cypress for end-to-end -end testing but Cypress also has a, essentially it's a kind of a unit testing side to it, where units in this case, in the case of a React app, a unit is a component. So you can actually write Cypress tests around a single component in your application, as opposed to writing Cypress tests that focuses on the entire application as one entity. And again, I'm giving you a hyperlink that you can follow to read up on that. So it's one or the other. You don't have to do both of them. But again, I, I would not be looking at either of these for a number of weeks until you've got all of the other stuff uh, bedded down. The assumption, of course, is that each of these grade bands assumes that you have satisfied the the, the grade band preceding it. So in other words, in order to get into the 60 to 80 bracket, you must have satisfied all of the requirements of the previous grade band, as well as the requirements of uh, this particular grade band. So it's kind of cumulative in other words. Uh, the branching policy I'm actually not going to talk over that because that relates to CI. And so I'll come back to it uh, after the midterm break. But as I've already kind of said, I don't know if it's kind of made sense to you or not, but once you have done the GitLab lab, which is the first lab that you do when you come back, then you will essentially be applying this branching policy. You will have practiced it in that lab. And uh, all I'm requiring you to do is to continue that practice in the assignment. Uh, that's okay. I'm saying the starting point for this assignment is the, uh, the, the, the solution that you will submit to me for today's lab, the E2E testing lab. That is essentially going to be your starting point because what you will be submitting to me in today's lab is your movies app that you have developed so far in the web app dev module augmented with some Cypress tests. Um, yeah, so that's going to be your starting point. And what am I saying? Oh yeah, well, I've already mentioned this point. Um, you will remove 
any of the Cypress tests, mainly just the it blocks, I suppose, that you would have developed in today's lab, you remove those, uh, or you should remove them eventually. You, you may not remove them initially, but make sure before you actually submit your assi this assignment to me, make sure that you have removed all of the tests that we wrote in today's lab. Don't include those in your submission for this assignment. I only want to see the new tests that you have written. Some of those new tests would be very like the tests that uh, I provide in today's lab, and that's okay, but I, um, I don't want to see both of them. I don't want to see the new tests and the ones that I provided you with. What's point number three? You see, this assignment is running in parallel with the web app dev assignment. And so in the web app dev assignment, you will be adding some React code. And in this assignment, you are writing tests for that new React code. So I'm just saying periodically, and you're gonna you you're gonna have two different folders. Uh, that you'll be juggling here now. You, you have the folder that contains the work that you're doing on my assignment and the folder that you will be uh, working on for the web app dev assignment. And so periodically, I'm just saying, you're going to be copying the essentially the SRC folder from the web app dev assignment. You'll just be copying that over onto or uh, into the folder for this assignment's That makes sense. So that's a lot of talk for me. Uh, are there any immediate questions uh, that you have for me to clarify some stuff? No. So you work on today's lab, you submit today's lab then that is your starting point for this assignment. And whenever you get to start developing some new features for your React app in the web app dev assignment, you're gonna be making changes to the SRC folder. When you've got those features working for the web app dev assignment, you simply do a copy uh, of the SRC folder for the from the web app dev assignment and copy them over into the folder for this module's assignment. And then you start writing tests for those features. And you continue on in that way for at least the first uh, two weeks, I would imagine. Then you can bring in the GitLab CI stuff into the picture uh, further down the line. So you don't really need to go near it for at least two weeks, I would suggest. Okay, that's uh, as much advice as I can give you. Uh, if you don't have anything to ask me, and if you have questions, you can put them to me on Slack, but uh, maybe preferably put them into the general channel so that everybody can see them. Okay, for right now, uh, you should go to today's lab, which is this one. Okay, uh, just one word about it. Uh, in this setup section here, I'm saying, I'm assuming you have completed, where do I say it? Oh yeah, here, right? I'm assuming you've completed part two of the movies app labs. You know, the way Roseanne is presenting it, she's, a, she's kind of got version one of the movies app and then version two. Uh, I think last week you were working on version three and maybe this week uh, or maybe after the midterm, you'd be working on version four. Well, you must have completed at least version two of the movies app 
um, and preferably version three, actually, which would have been last week's. So, and I tell you exactly what to do. I think uh, well, you can actually use the uh, the folder that you have been using on your desktop uh, or your laptop machine for the web app dev labs. You can use that and just start adding some Cypress tests to that code base. It's not going to affect any of the React stuff that you're developing. So you won't be creating a new folder at all. You'll just be essentially using the uh, the source code that you have been developing in the web app dev module in those labs and just using that as the basis for this lab here and adding some Cypress stuff to it. So I'll let you work away and uh, get in touch with me if you're unsure of what you're supposed to be doing. You are submitting this lab as well to me. Do make sure that you delete the node modules folder before you submit it. You'd have to reinstall them obviously then after you've zipped it up and submitted it to me because you will you'll need to do you will be doing some more work on the uh, on the movies app but do delete the node modules because it they're fairly significant in terms of size and i don't want large zips being uh, uploaded to moodle because i have to download all of those and it's just much slower to do it okay uh too much talk i'll let you work away and uh, come back to me if there are some issues that i need to clarify for you